I want to welcome you to World History. This is a class in which we will not only learn about ancient history in particular, and we'll move on up into um, uh, the modern world, uh, somewhat the modern world at the beginning in, during the Middle Ages, uh, but it's a class in which we integrate what's going on in the Bible with what's happening, particularly in the ancient world. Um, and maybe you've wondered about that. You read about Daniel being in Babylon. Uh, you read about Moses going to Egypt. And you may have wondered, well, how does that fit into what we know historically occurred in those places? And we're going to, to, to uh, go into that. We're going, we're going to see that when the Bible talked about people, that there was a relationship between those people, particularly in the Old Testament, with the civilizations that were around at that time. And uh, hopefully that will uh, help to improve your understanding of the Bible, uh, your confidence in the Bible as being a reliable historical work, and, uh, and thereby enable you to be able to communicate biblical truth to others with whom you might come in contact. And I don't mean to limit it to the Old Testament, the New Testament, of course, too. Uh, there's a lot of interaction, you know, the time of Christ. Of course, the Roman Empire is uh, in existence at that time, and there's a lot of relationship between the people of the New Testament as well. But uh, particularly in the Old Testament, uh, there is a, a lot of ignorance, even among Christian people, as to what relationship there was between characters in the Old Testament and the world around them. And we're going to... Uh, bring that together, and, I, and I, that's what makes it exciting to me, is to not only learn history, you know, I think that's interesting in itself, and all of you may not agree with that, but hopefully you'll agree that it's interesting to learn what the Bible says, and to see how Bible characters uh, are found in history as well, and to see what, uh, and most importantly, to see that God is moving through history. I had a professor once and maybe you've heard this before, that said that history is really his story. It's the story of God. Because God is in control. God is the sovereign Lord over the universe and everything that happens in it. And he is engineering uh, every event according to his plan to bring about his goal, to bring about his purposes. And so everything we see happening in history is not just an event that happened to happen, but it's something behind uh, that God is behind. That God is engineering that, and so we can see uh, as we look through history what God has done, uh, how He has protected His people, what He has done with His Word. All those things are a part of God's plan, uh, and I think that's exciting. So, in order for us to understand uh, where we're going, we need to uh, have. Uh, some information concerning the class, and uh, so I have a letter here that is directed toward uh, your parents and for you to read as well. So if you're at home and taking this class, um, I will put this in uh, the mailbox that is designated for you in the uh, school office, and you can pick it up there. Uh, we're going to, to read over this. Now, if you have it upon this YouTube series, and you're not taking this class as a high school student, then I would suggest you probably skip on to the next lecture at this point, uh, and uh, that will be more informative for you. This will be a lot of uh, information that would not be interesting for you. So if you are not taking this as a class, stop right now and go to the next lecture. All right, everybody have a letter? We should have a lot left over because we have another class coming in. All right, let's look over the letter. Notice it's addressed to your parents. Uh, that doesn't mean that you're not going to read it. You are, but your parents need to read this as well. Uh, they're going to sign it, uh, and we'll see that in a minute. All right, it says, please read, sign, and return this letter by Thursday, August 29th. That's this next Thursday. So you got a couple days to grab a parent and say, I need you to read this and sign it so I can take it back. And then, uh, once you bring it back, I'll give it back to you to keep in your notebook because it has information you will uh, want to have available. Uh, any supplies 
should you should have in your possession by Tuesday. Probably, you probably have all of them already, but uh, by Tuesday, certainly. All right. Uh, in my classes, you are to use notebook paper without frayed edges. So anybody doesn't I know what a frayed edge is? What I mean by that? I need to explain that. Okay. Uh, and if you use frayed edges, if you turn a paper in with frayed edges, I'll just take 10 points off of your score. So don't do it. Uh, blue or black ink pen or pencil. Actually, I prefer pen if, if you can. Uh, it's easier to read than pencil. Uh, you'll, you're you're going to need highlighters from time to time in here. When I give you something to read, and uh, you might have to highlight it. Uh, you need a probably a two-inch three-ring notebook with dividers. Uh, you need to have sections for notes and handouts, corrected assignments, quizzes, and tests to have have those in separate places, not just thrown in there together, not just stuffed in the front. These need to be in the notebook in the proper place. And uh, when I give you your textbook, uh, you will need to put a cover on that. Any questions about the supply list? All right, rules and grading. First of all, it uh, goes without saying, probably speak only with permission and with respect, both for the teacher and other students. When the charge bell rings, be in your seat and prepare for class to begin. Next, bring the necessary materials to class. Here's something that I find uh, uh, disturbing among American Christians today, is the number of times I hear God's name taken in vain. What's it mean to take his name in vain? It means using God's name and out of context of when you're talking to God or talking about God. So oftentimes I hear people, especially on TV, all the time, oh my God, oh my God. That is blasphemy. That is using God's name in vain. We ought not to do that. Um, and of course, as Christians, they've kind of toned it down a little bit, so we just substitute the word gosh for God. Oh my gosh. Gosh means God. <laughs> it's just a vulgarized uh, nickname if you will, for God. So don't do that. Uh, that That is, you're, you're breaking one of God's commandments right here in front of you when you do that. And that's offensive to me that you would use God, God's name like that. Uh, working on assignments for other classes while this class and session is not permitted. Uh, if you do that, I'll just pick it up and throw it away. Uh, when you're in this class, you're paying attention to what's going on in this class. Unless I give you time to work and you say, well, I I have something I have to get done for another class. Okay, but during class during class time when we're talking, when I'm lecturing, uh, you are not to be doing other things. Turn working on time. Assignments should be ready at the beginning of class. That means when you come in. So you still don't have you know you still haven't put your name on your paper and you're not ready. And these I don't need to be done before you get here. When I ask for your assignment, I'm not waiting for you to put your name on it. If I do, I'm taking off 15 points because it's late, because you made me wait, made everybody else wait, made the whole class wait. So if you don't have it prepared to give to me when I ask for it, then um, it'll be considered a late grade. If you have to go to your locker and get it, it's late. If you can't find it, we have to wait, then it's late. All right, so be prepared. Any questions about Work being uh, ready on time. And that includes proper heading as well. I should probably uh, tell you that right now. Uh, I think I have a paper I'll put up later. Uh, I, I would expect a, a proper heading to have your name at the top, then the date, then the class. So you can put WH if you want, or world, or world history. And then put the whatever the assignment is. Don't just say questions. Don't just say homework. I want to know exactly what it was. Because sometimes they get papers from people, and uh, sometimes people uh, are not here, and they turn to me later, and I don't necessarily you're not with the other ones. And so, what what is this assignment you're giving me? I don't know. You know, I don't I don't have a photographic memory to know everything that you write down where it came from. So make sure you put the page number or whatever it is. Okay. Uh, so that should be, I, I like it in the upper right hand corner. I think um, some teachers maybe use upper left hand. Uh, if you if you are in the habit of using left hand, okay. Uh, but uh, if you uh, don't care, I would like it in the right hand corner. 
All right, so that's uh, make sure your your paper is headed properly. Uh, if it's not, I'll take points off. Any question about that? Uh, if you're absent on the day of an announced test or quiz, it's, it's expected that it will be taken the first class time upon your return. So if we have, a, if I've told you ahead of time, it's on the assignment board. We have a quiz on Thursday, and you're not here Thursday. You don't get an extra day. You know, take it on Monday. You take it on Friday if you're here on the next day, all right? Because you knew about it. Anything that's announced, uh, you take it the next time you're back. Uh, if you have a planned absence, you decide to go on vacation while the rest of us are slaving away. If, if that doesn't bother you to do that, it will bother you. You have to get all your work done while you're gone. And it, and it all needs to be turned in upon your return. You don't get extra days to catch up. Anything you miss has to be turned in immediately. That includes any quizzes or tests taken immediately. And unless those are materials I haven't given you or something. And since this class is on video, even if you're away, even if you're sick, you can still watch the video and stay caught up. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, if you are, you've got the flu really badly and, you know, you can hardly keep your eyes open, I'm not saying you have to watch the video that day. Okay, but if you're in a position where you can, uh, that keeps you from getting behind. <clears throat> so that's an advantage in this class. <clears throat> if you're going to be gone, for a school activity, field trip, or maybe some athletic event that would require you to be gone uh, in the morning, um, any work due that day should be given to me before you go. Uh, don't come and ask me for extra credit work. Usually what that means is I haven't done my regular work, so I want something to do to make up some points. <clears throat> but I do give. Uh, the opportunity for everybody to uh, do this anytime. You can get five points for every half hour uh, of viewing programs on television or YouTube that are of historical significance. So sometimes on uh, the History Channel, Discovery Channel, I have some videos on my, in my own library. Uh, certainly on YouTube you can find all kinds of things. Uh, I would it'd be advisable to ask permission ahead of time whether this would count if you know a program. Uh, or if you just, you know, we're studying something and you find a YouTube about what we're studying, that probably would be okay. So if you watch something to get extra credit, you just need to take some notes about what you're learning. You don't have to outline the whole thing, what's on it, but tell, just tell, jot down some things that you learned from watching that and, and how much time you spent. Because the extra credit points are according to the time you spent watching. Okay? And you can do that on a note card if it's if it's only like if an hour thing, put it on a note card or a half hour. Um, if it's if you're looking at a whole series, you might want to put it on some paper. But you can get extra credit by doing those kind of things. Any questions about that? All right, grades come primarily from these sources: daily work, quizzes, projects, and tests. <clears throat> Some of the daily work you do, some of the homework you do, will be counted as a grade. So out of 100%. You know, if there are 10 questions, you know, it's, if you miss one, you get a 90%. You know, you know how that goes. Sometimes I'll give you an assignment, and I won't take a grade from it. I'll just check to see if you've got it done. And so it doesn't matter, in a way, whether the answers are right or not. I'm just checking to see if you did it. And if you get it done, Without even looking at the answers, if you did the assignment, I'll give you 20 points if I decide not to grade that one. Uh, after we have five of those, then those add up to 100 points, and then it'll count as a homework grade. So five of the daily grades add up to a regular homework grade of 100%. Uh, if you come to school one day and I, I'm taking a daily grade and you don't have it done, you don't get that 20 points. That means the most you could get on your homework grade for daily grades is an eight. So you just lose that point. If you give to me late, uh, I, I, I vary from the, the homework policy in that because it's a daily grade thing. Um, if you if you give it to me like later that day, whatever, then it'll be 10 points instead of 20. All right. Um, 
in addition, uh, three lines up from the bottom of that paragraph, pop quizzes, notebook quizzes over information, and notebooks may be given for separate grades. Quizzes count as a double grade, tests <coughs> cover unit study, count as a triple grade. Any questions about grades? All right, world history students are required to complete a reading project each semester. I want you to learn not just in class, I want you to learn outside of class. So you're required to read related books and write a short report on the reading. The grade will come from a satisfactory report from the number of pages read. So you get to pick your grade. Isn't that wonderful? You get to pick what grade you want. How many want 100%? Good, I'm glad all of you want 100%. That's good. Well, all you have to do is read 350 pages in uh, books outside of class related to the topic for the semester. All right, now, in order to help you along that way, that, by the way, that counts as a triple grade, in order to help you to not wait until the last minute, because believe it or not, there have been students that haven't read a page until the weekend before and try to read 350 pages in one weekend. Usually, they haven't read it very well. They don't really know what they read. And so in order to help you not to put it off, I am uh, requiring you to keep on a schedule. So there's approximately one page of uh, telling me what you learned from what you're reading will be due prior to each midterm and quarter. And you will submit that on Google Classroom for a daily grade, daily grade credit. Uh, each report should include in the heading the number of pages read for that report and the total pages read thus far in the semester. So your first report, you might say, I've read 75 pages. And okay, it's up there at the top. The next time, uh, you've read more. Uh, and so you will say, well, I read um, se uh, 75 pages this time slash, but I've got a total of 150, or whatever it is, okay? So you put that on there each time uh, throughout the semester, for each uh, time throughout the semester, yeah. Uh, first semester project will be due December 13th, so that's when your total number of pages needs to be in for the semester. Second semester is May 20. Uh, midterm and quarter due dates are given to you there. So your next, the next, the first report you have to give me is September 16th, <clears throat> and uh, you, you should, <clears throat> excuse me, you should try to uh, pace out how many pages uh, per report you want in order to equal. If you're shooting for 350, you, know, you want to you want to make sure that you are not uh, waiting till the end to get a lot of that. In fact, I will expect that if you're not keeping up, that you're not going to get the 350. All right. Um, uh, I may ask you questions regarding the content of the book, <clears throat> and if you can't give me some answers, then that will indicate to me that you didn't really read it. All right. Any questions about the reading project? Oh, well, I should say too that there are books on my shelves that you can use uh, in world history. Uh, first semester. Um, let's see. First semester, <clears throat> we will. <clears throat> I think I'll call you first semester. We'll, we'll say that any books on uh, book case number two. Yeah, let's limit it to two. Book case number two would be something that would fit into first semester. That's the beginning of time up through uh, the beginnings of Christianity. And then second semester, we can go on to the the next book case. Uh, you're not limited to books that I have. Uh, if you want, if you have a book at home or you go to the library and want to find a book that's something that sparks your interest in the class, that's fine. Uh, I would suggest that if there's any doubt at all in your mind as to whether the book counts, that you come show it to me. <clears throat> Sometimes people have read books that totally have nothing to do with what we're studying. And I would hate to have to tell you, I'm sorry, all the pages you read for that don't count. All right, so make sure that it does fit in. Uh, and if you uh, check out a book from my library, there should be a note card in the front. If not, you'll have to make one. Uh, and you will sign your name on that with the date and 
put it in the little green basket that will be back on that corner desk back there. It's not there yet. And that way I can keep track of who has my books. Any questions? When you write your report, I don't want it to be an outline of the book or even a summary of the book. I want to know what you're learning from the book. So it's just, here's, here's what I'm learning. Here's what I, I thought this was interesting. You, know, you just tell things that you like in the book or things you don't like too. Now, if you start a book and you really don't like it very well, you don't have to read the whole thing. Just stop. Count the pages you've already read and get a different book. And, and of course, you will not be able to find one book that will have 350 pages, probably. There might be some, but you're probably going to need more than one book. And if you come up needing a few pages, or even if you want to do this, uh, you can read some sections of your textbook because there's some chapters that we will not get into. Oh, you don't have your textbooks yet. Uh, but uh, I, I will tell you that once you have your textbook as to what chapters you can read for uh, reading projects. Any questions about the projects? They count as a triple grade. Okay, notice at the bottom of the page there's a place for your parents to sign. And what they're signing is that they have read and will implement these requirements. Do not just shove this in front of your parents and say, here, I need you to sign this so I can take it back. Because if they sign it and they didn't read it, what you're doing is you encourage your parent to lie. So make sure they read it and then sign it. And you have already read it, at least in part. I would suggest looking over it again, and then you sign it and give that back to me Thursday. All right, next page gives some good note-taking tips. You'll be taking notes in here. I'll be giving you outlines most of the time, at, least at the beginning of the year especially, in which you fill in the blanks. <clears throat> not, one, not only will I tell you what goes in the blanks, but they'll usually be on a slide as well. Uh, so there's no reason for you not to be able to fill those in. Uh, but there are, are other times when you may have to take some notes in addition to that other things you want to write down. So here's some things that are helpful. First of all, come to class prepared. How many times have I heard people wanting to borrow paper, borrow a pencil? You know, bring your own stuff. And yet, you know, somebody else isn't responsible for making sure you have paper and pencil. Bring your own. <clears throat> now I would, I would say uh, the number two is not necessary. Starting a new page for each new class. Uh, so you can forget that one. Uh, don't try to write down every word your teacher says, or even everything that I have. You know, if I have a paragraph on the board, don't try to write it all down. Pick out the main points. You, know, you can go crazy trying to write down every word, and then what have you got? When you go to study, you've got so much to look at that you can't remember it all anyway. So just pick out the important points. In fact, sometimes I found helpful when I'm taking notes uh, to even draw pictures. I know you might hear it's not, you're not supposed to draw pictures in school. You know, in a class. But sometimes, if a picture illustrates what the teacher is saying, then you know, drawing a picture might help. Might be more beneficial than writing out a bunch of words. Write down the big ideas. Listen for facts, connections, and main ideas. <clears throat> Next, use abbreviations for commonly occurring names and words. Uh, that's something that uh, if you haven't developed yet, you need to. There are a lot of words that happen over and over again, right, when you're writing notes. What's, what's a word that happens frequently? When you're writing down notes, what's a word that happens a lot? Have you ever taken notes? Don't you find that you write of a lot? I, I don't know if I picked this up from shorthand or not, but I quickly discovered that I can use that for of. That way you don't have to write. Because sometimes that F can get kind of cumbersome. You know, it takes up a lot of space and I have to do a lot and go a lot of places. So if I just do that instead of of. What's well, another word to use a lot? The, right? So I just, to me, that, that's the beginning of the. So every time I see that, I know that means the. Um, instead of writing the word check, I just do that. So come up with symbols. If you ever have to write the word infinity, no, that's not very good. <laughs> but come up with uh, with abbreviations. Um, government. 
Don't write out the word, just abbreviate. Uh, for, and the word for, you know, I, I, uh, he was doing this for uh, his own benefit. I just put an F. I know every time I see the F, it's for. So come up with a, your own system, and you'll find that you'll you'll be able to take notes a lot faster, and it'll be, and, and you won't miss as much because you're, you know, not taking a lot of time writing out full words. Any questions? I'll leave lots of room on the page. Well, I'm going to be giving you outlines, and hopefully there'll be room. Sometimes I apologize ahead of time. There may I may not give much room, and in that case, you might have to use a piece of notebook paper uh, to fill out everything you need there. Uh, use diagrams and pictures. Write down corresponding page numbers from your textbook. This is helpful sometimes when we're grading a, a homework assignment. If you have an answer that's maybe different than the one I have, uh, and I say, well, where did you get that answer? Um, and we spend five minutes of class with you looking for it. Uh, if when you're writing your answers, you just put the number of the page, then you know immediately wh where you got that. And I can look at it. And sometimes I, I would have said, oh, I can see where you would think that. Maybe That's maybe not what the question was asking, but I can understand that you may have understood it that way. And so it means getting credit for it. Uh, so but if you don't have the page number written down, sometimes we don't know where it is. Uh, review your notes for accuracy. Uh, look them over uh, afterwards. In fact, I would suggest to you that the best way to study, and some of you have heard this before, but some of you are new. So I want to make sure I impress this upon you. If you go home every day and teach your notes to one of your parents, you will learn them better than trying to study it. Repeat, and, and then also help you to see if there's anything in your notes that is maybe not understandable. Maybe you wrote, have you ever written a word down and later you looked at it and thought, I don't have an idea what that word is. Well, if you go home that night and try to teach your parent, you'll know, you'll see it immediately and you call somebody up and say, what, you know, I have this, I don't know what that word is. Uh, but if you wait until the night before the test, you may not be able to get a hold of the person to tell you. And then now you're stuck. Now, now it's further removed. You don't have any idea what it is. So every day, I promise you, if you will go home every day and teach your notes to a parent, you will get much better grades than you would have otherwise. With less effort, with less studying before the test. Many st students who have done this have told me they hardly had to study for a test. Because just by repeating it, they learned it. That's why teachers know so much, because they keep saying the same thing over and over again. Right? Uh, make sure you get notes for this class. If you miss a class, uh, you have an advantage in here. You can always go to YouTube and watch the class that you missed. And, and you can get your notes from that. Or get them from somebody else. Uh, copy off of their notes. Make sure you do that as soon as possible. All right, do you have any questions about the, uh, the requirements, the rules, and grading? Yeah. I, I, this might not be about the, the requirements, rules, and grading, but what's the name of the channel that you post the stuff on? It's on YouTube. Okay. And then you go to HCS Homeschool. Okay. All right, and I, I should have put that in the letter. I didn't think about that. Uh, I'll, uh, if you remind me later, I'll write on the board for you later as well. But if you go to YouTube and, and search for HCS Homeschool, you'll find World History, you'll find U.S. History from last year. You'll find, right now, you'll find World History from last year. Uh, I need to get that off and, and we'll put the new ones on. If I got anybody can watch them. So if you, if you know people that are interested in uh, history or biblical history, you can direct them to that. Okay, any other questions? All right. Let's uh, get our textbooks. There are three stacks of world history textbooks there. I'm going to allow you just to go up and grab one. So you may do so now. As soon as you get it, write your name in the inside cover.
Okay, once again, make sure your name is on the inside front cover, right underneath the other names that are there. And we need to have a cover on this by Tuesday. Okay, having done that, let's open our textbooks to the table of contents. Here's how, this is what we're going to cover. <clears throat> Unit 1, as you see, is the ancient world. That is going to consume probably the entire first semester. Now, in our books, it's only Unit 1. But that's because even though our textbook is a Christian textbook, it does not spend a lot of time integrating biblical events into the historical narrative. I've done a lot of study in the ancient cultures and the biblical uh, connection. And so we're going to spend some time in that. And I think it's important for us to spend time there. Um, so because it has such an impact on our understanding of the Bible. And as Christians, that ought to be one of our primary focus, our focuses is understand the Bible, right? So we're going to spend a lot of time there. And uh, I, I think you'll find that very interesting. You know, we're going to find out things like who was the the Egyptian princess that, that drew Moses out of the Nile. You know what you know about that event, right? And who was the Pharaoh of the Exodus? And we're not told in the Bible, but we know in history we make make connections. Uh, so a lot of things like that we'll we'll uh, go through. Uh, so uh, we'll cover Unit One essentially in the first semester. <clears throat> unit Two. Uh, we have to skip in order to, to get to some other things. So if you want to read chapters 5 and or 6 for your part of your reading project, you can do that. Then unit 3 and 4 is what we'll cover second semester. So the Middle Ages up into the time of the Renaissance and Reformation. So anything after that, unit 5, 6, and 7... Uh, you can read for your reading project or extra reading. Okay, so if you find some of that interesting, you can read those. All right, make sure you uh, bring back your book, especially tomorrow. We're going to look at some other things in there.